So you can buy, say, the Sapphire Heroes SS. You are the gem expert. Yes, I am. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> I'm recognized again. I saw you on YouTube. <laughs> you want to be in the video? <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Day two of the Gem Expo in Hong Kong. Let me show you what they have here. Big rough ruby. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, it's day two of the Gem and Jewelry Expo. What's up, guys? It's day two of the Gem Expo here in Hong Kong. And as you can see, we have some amazing ruby inclusions here, some artwork and an amazing rough ruby. Let's go guys, let's go. We have no time to waste, we need to look at some more gemstones. And there's a second convention even starting today and we will go drive into the city of Hong Kong because we're still near the airport at the expo, but we will go to the convention center today and we will take a look at the most expensive jewelry in the world. Let's go guys. So that's when you exit the... Uh, train, express train, that drives directly from the airport to the convention center, to the expo center. The convention center is inside of the city, 40 kilometers away from the airport. So it takes you like 40 to 50 minutes with a car to get there. But look at the view here. It's insane. Let me focus on that. Crazy. Literally an island. So parts of Hong Kong is actually a, an island, actually. So yeah, so in order to enter here, you have to get your little card ready. Where's my card? And then you can go through these things here. Let me show you. So you put that card here. And then you have zero rights remaining. And you can uh, exit or enter. Let me show you. So yeah. So I already have my card ready. This is my card, it's a trading card, so you have a little priority. They didn't want to give me the press pass, but hey, you can't ask for everything. But we will go straight up to the uh, gems, because they have different halls here. Those are um, four different big halls, basically. Four huge halls with different intersections. Let's go, guys. It is quite irritating because they separate each hall into lanes and each lane is a separate hall they call. It's 11 lanes. So very irritating. I thought there are 11 of these huge halls, but basically it's just four. I mean, just four, it's huge. It's crazy, look at this. Yeah, let's see what we will see today. Guys, I just saw some cat's eye emeralds for 110,000 US dollars. Well, it was around 100,000 US dollars. It was 40 carats, I think. And it, this, this cat's eye effect was not that strong, actually, but it was like super rare, you know what I mean? Like you see a lot of cruiser barrel with cat's eye in it, but you don't see cat's eye emeralds. So yeah, quite rare. So we are back at the uh, Gemstone Bazaar. It's basically uh, letters on these boxes and each letter has an amount of money, the cost of the uh, box. And yeah, it's pretty cool looking, look at this. So you can buy, say the Sapphire here is SS. You are the gem expert. Yes, I am. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> I'm recognized I again. I saw you on YouTube. <laughs> you want to be in the video? <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. <laughs> So you have these boxes here with the lettering, and the lettering indicates the cost of the box. So that would be $110 for this garnet here, for instance. Pretty cool. It's a very creative thought, you know. Well, my alarm. Let's see. Rubelite. That's a nice rubelite. It's not bad, actually. It's, uh, you can make some cool deals here. I mean, those are not super rare gemstones, but hey, you know, it's fun to search for the stones and uh, 
wow, here's a Trapeach Emerald even. But these are priced like individually. Pretty cool. Guess they are from Japan, yes, Japan. They always come up with the most creative ideas, I guess. <laughs> Japanese people are genius. We have pearls. Wow. A Korea pearl, $1,100. So these are individually priced, as you can see, a green tourmaline, $180. It's a still a very good deal. I mean, if you compare it to Europe, you can't even get these stones in the first place. And uh, the prices would be much higher. I can only speak for Germany, but Germany is a, it's a total mess when it comes to pricing of gemstones. 490. Yeah, it's very nice, very nice. What's your favorite gemstone? I don't really have a favorite, but uh, my first stone that I bought was a sapphire, like uh, unheated. It was uh, luckily unheated even. Oh. It, it was very rare with root tail silk in it See? ever since. Uh, I've been doing this stuff. When you bought it, you didn't know that it was a no heat? I didn't know, I just bought it. It was a ring actually, it was a ring. And I looked at it, uh, I was in an Asian restaurant, and I looked at it from a certain angle, and I saw the rutile silk in it. And then I realized, wow, this is unheated. You know, I remembered it from the photos of the labs. Yeah. So since then you have been buying suppliers or not no heat ones? No heat. <laughs> no heat's the best, I mean. They are the best, you need yeah. to pay the cost. Just heat is also okay, but... It's something else if it's untreated. Look at this quartz. $110. Pretty cool. They also have diamonds. Pretty cool. Look at this. The natural? Probably. Hmm. That's good. Are these natural diamonds or? Are these natural? Natural. Natural. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I of see. Course if it natural. would be synthetic, it would be a lot cheaper. <laughs> you can see the price. I mean, I don't know. I always ask, you know, before. You cannot tell. Like, could be also synthetic. Who knows? <laughs> Very creative. <laughs> yeah, guys, kiss. That was the Japanese KISS crew selling gemstones in bulk for uh, average prices. Let's see, uh, it's called Kishung Inc. Shiku <laughs> Kishung Inc. I can't speak anymore, man. It's been too much since yesterday here. I'm overwhelmed by this. Sigma Corporation. They have so interesting names here. But this is really artistic. We saw that yesterday already. Let's take a look at some new booths. So we are at a Japanese booth and they sell coral, as you can see. So pearls and coral is popular in Japan and China. Very nice. Very nice. How much is... this is coral, right? Yes. How much is a piece like this? This is 2,000 and 3,000. US dollars? US yes. per carat. It's per carat? It's not yeah. coral, it's yeah. conch pearl. It's a pearl. Pearl, yes. natural pearl. It's a pearl. It's a wow, pearl. I see. It's a very rare yes, type of pearl. Yes, yes. Okay. From, this, from this. From this shell. Yeah. From this shell, this uh, pearl. Conch comes. shell. I see, I see, I see. I was irritated. I see, I see. So, how much is it per carat? One, one carat, 2,000. Two, wow. So wow. 22,000. 22,000 yeah. US dollars for this piece. This is 3,000. Interesting, interesting. Very nice. Very expensive. But it's very, it's yeah, mostly sold in China, there. in Asian countries, very right? Very mostly very sold in Caribbean, and Caribbean island. Caribbean island. Caribbean. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, Interesting. Caribbean. I know that. I've never seen yeah, something like this in, in uh, yeah, Europe. For, yeah. Europe is very rare. It's in Japan, Japan and Japan, China. Japan, like, yeah, China also. Yeah, like, China uh, also. I mean, you have cultivated, invented the cultivation of yeah, pearls, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. What's the name of the company? Kando LTD. Very nice. So was it really a gemstone? I mean, it was a pearl, somewhat, but it was a very rare type of pearl, I guess. And it's uh, only popular in Japan and China. So it's a niche market still. Niche market for pearls. But yeah, just want to show you something you haven't seen yet. 
we're, I see. we're actually, ours are a little bit low because we are you know, working our way to the tail end of our business life. So this is a nice broad flash like this one, has the mm -hmm. same sort of level, this probably a little bit more crystal, right? But you can see this one here, 7 carats at 350. So oh, I see. Say, yeah, so that's a whole price. That's a big piece too. So, um, yeah, so, so net, we we sell that with 30% discount, so our net, net US price is 245, mm -hmm. and then we divide that by, let's say, 7, so that's 35. So you find that wholesale here is probably about half what you might find there. So, you know, if we weren't in our final year of business, mm. I'd be selling that for somewhere around 60, 70 per carat for that one. Wholesale. 60 per carat? 60 to 70 per carat. Yeah. Per carat? Yeah, yeah. This is like four carats, I yeah, think. It yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. So that's yeah. like two hundred forty. Yeah. Two hundred forty dollars yeah. around that. Yeah. Hey, I'm reassured. I got it for that'd free. <laughs> and that'd be a fine price, yeah. Yeah. This one here, it's uh, so we just call this a term that you don't get outside of the fields, but we just call this grey. Mm -hmm. And um, and the good things about this is that pattern play is even yeah. on it, same pattern and even over it, and having that little blue flick in it is actually quite popular. Oh, I see. Yeah, little blue, blue, red. It's like the sort of opal, of Australian opal of old, mm -hmm. you know? um, but price per carat is not that great on, on that one. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, as you as you know, it's, it's flat and it's thin, so some people would be weary, yeah. weary about it. Um, so, Guys, if you are wondering, I'm trying to find out how much these opals are worth because in Germany it's you can't you can't find it out. Everybody has so high prices, always retail. And here I have a an opal expert showing me also the re, the comparable qualities yeah. in his prices. So it's 100% transparency here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's important, you know, like. If you go to someone who retails and has his own interest, they, of course yeah. they tell you it's less worth because they try that's to buy right. it and then... Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, so, out of here, that's coming out at 26 US per carat. Oh, only? Oh, I see, yeah. I see, I see. So it's, it's not great, but as I say, mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, ours is, all the stuff has been repriced and it, because mm -hmm. we're in the twilight of our career, mm -hmm. it's, it's lower than you'd find. I see, we couldn't I see, I see. replace it. We couldn't buy oh. rough now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and cut it and, and sell it for this price. I see, I see. But you've been doing this for a while. Forty years. Yeah. <laughs> forty years. I see. I'm not even forty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a bit of an idea. Uh, of course. It's, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. I, uh, I'm now uh, expanding on becoming an expert and uh, also not getting to know the prices. Yeah. It's also interesting for me because theoretic theoretical knowledge. Identifying it, you know, whether it's hydrophane or not, and uh, oh, yeah. probably the origin that's has been uh, my journey and I accomplished that. But now getting to know the prices is interesting for me too. Thank yeah. you so much. But th this, is, this one is quite, this yeah, one, this this is, one is easier this to is sell, sell probably. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's easier yeah. to sell probably. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So I know, I'll write that down. Thank you. Okay. So, should I show the name of the company maybe? Do we want yeah. that? Or? Well, you can do that. So check out Opal Pacific. You are based in Australia, right? No, or New Zealand. New Zealand, actually. No, no, just to confuse people. <laughs> <laughs> so here you have no, the info. We, we mined for six years, and then, and then we, but we, even as uh, as teenagers, we were uh, wow. cutting stone. I so see. We I see. Just moved into full time. So it's a real passion. It's not just for the money. It's yeah, guys. Yeah. You can see what they have accomplished. They have a lot of stones here. Very nice. Beautiful. So here's the booth. Opal Pacific LTD. Check them out. Thank you. Okay. Guys, that was a great experience. Like, these guys have been so openly friendly. Guys, that was an amazing experience. I was asking just for the pricing of these Opals because I have no clue. And they've been so friendly and openly open minded that they just, you know, showed me their stones and sh showed me their prices. And we find actually a, a price per carat for these stones. And it was amazing. Yeah, and here we see, that's coral here actually, you know. Pretty sure this here is coral. Pretty cool. Italian. Yeah, this is Italy actually. They like coral. So Italy, 
coral is sold in Italy, China too. So Japan, China and Italy like coral and uh, I call them the sea gemstones, gemstones of the sea, it's gemstones of the ocean I would call them. But this is crazy, I just want to show you what the Chinese have to offer, like this is the highest class, look at this, it's crazy. Wow, beautiful. It's that next level, Shanghai Shuju jewelry. Look at the reports, like platinum awards. And here we can see like price per carat goes up to <laughs> Gargashian prices, like $14,000 a carat, $20,000 a carat for emerald. Like I'm talking about like two carat, three carat stones, but they are the best color, best clarity. Yeah. And Overall, the, the best cut, I guess. I mean, I didn't really look at the stones, but this is the highest class. That's when we talk about even small stones having a such high price. Amazing. Guys, check these books out, Star Gems. I'm right here at the booth of Steinbach Gems with a star. And yeah, take a look at this. Rare stars, the most amazing books. I mean, in a sense of we have seen several books, but this is also the only man that makes specifically books about star sapphires. He's the specialist for every gemstone with a star in it. Matter of fact, this is rutile silk, titanium oxide, as I said many times before, that creates this phenomenon, and it's just beautiful to look at. Take a look at this. This is uh, not just a book that has been printed for, uh, you know, making money. This is really done with heart and soul in the sense of look at this, the way it's made. And <laughs> look at this book here. There are actually stones inside of this book. This is pretty cool. How much does this cost in US dollars? In US dollars, uh, so minimum 70,000 euros. Seven, seven, 17,000 17, US dollars for this book right here. Is, is there more stones in there or is it just the surface? Like this is, this is it, right? This is, th those are all the stones that are in? Yes, yes, I see, I see. But yeah, it's, let me just open one page. It's also gold plated, some of the books you said, right? Let's not, let's not open this. <laughs> but here, like you can see that. Look at this. It's actually gold plated on the surface here. So those books are very, very exclusive. Very exclusive. Those are pieces of art, matter of fact. This is not just a book, it's a piece of art in itself. Very nice. Just to get the footage of these star sapphires, you have to keep in mind, these star sapphires are the rarest gemstones in the world. You will, they are just a view of them, just to find them. And also the pricing of it is very difficult since they are so rare. So yeah, definitely six figures, seven figures, some of these, right? They are very expensive gemstones, especially rubies that are transparent and have a star in them. You see them in a museum, uh, not even in the museum, it's probably in private hands, it's not in museums. So yeah, this is definitely amazing. Check out, the, the prices are more than reasonable. This is a very good deal. I mean, 110 US dollar for a book like this, you will never find this nowhere, you know. But that's also because he's selling privately, right? There's no uh, distributor behind us, right? Or just private, private created this, he privately created this book, selling it with no distributor, guys. If you are into gemstones, you should support us. This is amazing, definitely. VIP edition, 250 US dollars. And what's the difference between the uh, normal and the VIP edition? Tell you, this is gold. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Oh, I see, that's the difference. So this is the normal and this is the gold plated yes. one. Very nice. So if you want a gold plated one, 250. And then we have, this is again the, the normal edition, right? It's the no, same as this. Yeah. yeah, this is the normal. Okay, it's the same. And then we have this here, which is uh, another edition. It's another uh, book, right? That's a different book. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same book. It's the same book? Blue. And, oh, it's a blue. It's, oh, okay. So it's a different design. Same book, different, yes, different exactly. cover. Different cover. I understand. 250 US dollars, guys. And take a look at this, the imagery of it. Guys, this is not synthetic. This is, right? Photos of actual star sapphires. This is synthetic. This is synthetic. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I read it. Okay, I see. So you do, but you also see real ones, right? So the, yeah, I see. I read it. Diffusion treated synthetic star coronums. Yeah, I see. I see. But you will see a lot of real ones, right? There are a lot of real star sapphires. Also rough. And here's the rutile silk. That's what I'm talking about. That's the titanium oxide. Pretty cool. Silk needles and untreated sapphire from sapphire from Sri Lanka. Sorry. And yeah, these are natural. Right? <laughs> these are natural. I can tell these are natural. So you will see the rarest gemstones in the world in this book. And also an explanation of 
every aspect of it, from chemical composition probably to, I mean, it's the most in-depth book about brutal silk gemstones in the world. It is, you know, and it's probably also the only, right? With imagery like this, I have never seen something like this. This is amazing, look at this. And here, what, what I saw before at the convention, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, the, um, I saw a cat's eye emerald, and uh, very, very rare, like high, very high price. They wanted uh, 110,000 US dollars for their 40 carat stone, and the, st the, the cat's eye effect was not that apparent. So if you have a strong cat's eye effect in emerald, the rarest stone in the world, one of the rarest, amazing, pretty cool. So yeah, you can find this apparently also in Opal. You will learn a lot in this book. You, let's just say that. Let's just close this book again. You will learn a lot in this book. Check them out. It's Steinbach Gems. Gems with a star. Amazing. Thank you for showing me. I'm honored to see this. Amazing. Finally, I get my hands on this. <laughs> Guys, it's so irritating. So I talked to this German lady and I talked with her in English. She probably didn't even know I was German, but yeah, luckily, because I don't want to speak to Germans in German. Not always. Hey, there's my homie. And basically, she told me that there are actually four more halls of this. And she explained to me, I have to go upstairs to find another booth and this and that. And it's total nonsense. Obviously, it's just four halls. Like, it would be way too much. Like, I don't know, man. And she, she was very serious. Like, yeah, you're going to have to go upstairs and look for another hall and this and that. And I'm like, I, I kind of doubt that. So I was looking around and I actually found the booth here, the Yavovsky booth that I was looking for. Here it is. Yeah, and uh, I mean Germans, you know, you, it's difficult. Like, they don't know everything. They always act like they know everything, but they don't. Here are more books. Also, the most beautiful gemstone book in the world. It's amazing, guys. Take a look at this. It's beautiful. Hi. Also, the art he's creating. Pretty interesting art. <laughs> Especially that one. <laughs> I like that one. So he's pregnant with tourmalines. Very nice. I think it's depicting himself. So he is a true artist. He is very nice. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. The most polarizing figure in the gemstone industry, actually. He truly is. <laughs> and amazing stones too. Take a look at this. Unfortunately, he's not here. But yeah, also a smart way, you know, like to connect to people, just put your QR code here. Nobody does that. He's the only one who does it. Well, take a look at this. Spinel. He's known for uh, believing in the Spinel stone before anybody was interested in it. So he got his hands on a view. And now he's successful with it because now Spinel is popular. Oh, here's the infamous Aquamarine stone he's posting always. Take a look at this chunk of Aquamarine. I mean, wow. This is unimaginable beautiful yeah we have some ethiopian emeralds yeah this is definitely superb beautiful also a rough specimen lovely i like it and a rough corundum piece no heat sapphires yeah this is this is a real collection you know if you love gemstones you truly pick you don't just buy anything for profit, you really pick the stones because you like the cut and the color and the, the life of the stone. That's when you see stuff like this because it's, wow, just those uh, red spinels here. It looks like it's glass, literally, but it has some life to it. It has more life than glass, but the clarity of it is so superb. So this is the highest class of cold gemstones in the world here. This is superb, unreal. It doesn't even look real. There's no inclusion in it unimaginable really wow i think that's a rough spinel oh no it's it's faceted parts of it or at least the facets you know it's um complement complementing the natural complementing the natural facets of the gemstone but yeah this red spinel is just magical you have to see it in real life this one here is beautiful here's a natural piece of corundum that's how sapphires are found in not always, but that's the ideal shape. That's how it's supposed to look like. Beautiful stones. What can I tell you here? These mandarin garnets or fanta garnets, also called specetite. It's a garnet variety. It's just, wow. The clarity of this and the price. I don't know, like, how much? $10,000 a carat. Who knows? Like, it's, it's very high price. Very high price. Yeah. The man himself, 
Vlad Javovsky. You heard about him, right? He's here? I haven't seen him. He was hiding, like, he was hiding from me. There he is, there he is. Vlad, you want to be in the video? <laughs> there he is, the man himself. I'm good. I do YouTube videos about gemstones. Good idea. I saw, I saw your videos. I saw your books. You have the most amazing books in the world. I mean, wow. Is it true you took all the photos by yourself? Yeah, my friend, and I make a painting now. Ah, yeah, I also saw that. I also saw that. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> the Where most... are you from? I'm from Germany, actually. Okay. Germany, yeah. Okay, good. So you do about the gemstone and jewelry, right? Yeah, yeah gemstones. I, do, I did a tour on the Bangkok show, and now I do a tour on uh, the Hong Kong show. Okay, uh, Aquamarine, beautiful. Take a look at this. Yeah, that was the Yavovsky booth. I actually met him. Pretty cool. Yeah, his books are definitely the best when it comes to colored gemstones and overall gemstones. I mean, yeah, he doesn't sell diamonds, obviously. I mean, colored, let's call them gemstones, just gems and overall gemstones. And the Star Sapphire books are very specific and they are the best Star Sapphire books. And he's, by matter of fact, the only guy who does it. What we saw prior, yeah. So guys, me, behind me is the Yavovsky booth right here. And right on the other side is one of the only Jade booths. And that's because Jade is usually sold already set in jewelry and not sold as individual stones or carvings. Take a look at this. But there will start another convention today in uh, central Hong Kong. And there will be a lot more Jade, they told me, because they sell uh, jewelry. This year is focused on loose gemstones. That's why we find Jawowski and uh, the other guys here, because they sell only loose gemstones. But here is sold on the other con at the other convention is sold jewelry, set jewelry. So yeah, take a look at this. And they only sell jadeite, guys. No, no nephrite, right? Only jadeite. Yeah. Only jadeite. Type A jadeite only. No treatment. Very nice. Beautiful. Do you maybe have a type B or C specimen here? No. Or, no. 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 You don't even have it. You can't even show me how it looks like. And, it looks the same. It's, uh, is it very UV reactive probably, right? On the UV light you see a strong yeah. reaction probably, right? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. The polymers are UV reactive usually, guys. If you wonder how to identify it, if it's very strong UV reactive, it is most likely 100% uh, B or C so treated. Yeah. And if you see some UV reaction in these pieces here, or let's say in my bracelet, that's normal because the, the wax can be a little bit UV reactive. And if there is always a little bit of wax, not always, but in most pieces, a little bit of wax is inside of the surface to uh, give it its shine. That's that's what it's there for. You're the professional. I am the. Or, you know? <laughs> I, I try to. I try to explain <laughs> it. I try to explain the people the truth. The truth. Yeah. On every and every gem, it's difficult to do every gemstone, you know, because yeah. it's so many gemstones. Yes, yes. And but, uh, uh, yeah. tra 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 traditional, which price is uh, more expensive in green. Yeah, yeah I know. The, either it's uh, clear, clear, right? You have clarity, or you yeah, have yes, color. Yes, yes. And color, color, color is yeah, always yeah. wins. Color yeah. always is more expensive, yes, yes, right? Yes, if yes. it's green, once you have and, green and, in it, and, and, and it depends on the transparency. Transparency, you know, the yeah. crystal structure overall, right? Yes, uh, yes, the luster, okay. luster yeah. of the crystal. Yes, the luster. Very yeah. nice. Right, right, right. And how about the lavender uh, jade? Is it the same as the white same, jade? Same, same. Same as white. Same, same. I see, I see. But some, some people, they make like, uh, they, they, they heat it. I don't know 
no. Mm. Some some people so like. So they said it. But they heat it. But all make by from the natural. So most some of these colors they make heat it. Oh okay. So the orange. Yeah, I can imagine that orange can be due to heat. Yeah, yes. from yes. its chemical yes. composition. But it's very hard to identify. Maybe you make the shirt. Hard to identify. Yeah, yeah I see. A so little little tricky. Yeah, okay, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool. How much is like the butterflies of the of the jade? Like, like this one? Yeah. Twenty for yeah. both. Yeah, both. Full, full price. Yes, yes, yes. Look at this, guys. This is artistic. I mean, this is art. Beautiful. It's handmade, right? Yeah. Beautiful. It's Look at lavender. this. Lavender. Lavender um, jade. The sound yeah. is handmade. The sound of it. Can you hear this, guys? It's pretty cool, but very fragile, right? If you drop this, yeah. yes, it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's not good. Yeah. But yeah, this is. It's a piece of it's a piece of art. It reminds me. That's what I saw. That's the first uh, note I saw here in Hong Kong. Look at it. That's what Hong Kong is known for: art. Look at this. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, nowhere in the world you see money like this, right? Yeah. This is uh, it's, like a yeah. yes, it's a collector's yes. item. It's a collector's item. It's because it reminds me of the of the wings. I see a lot of yeah. wings and jade cut. It's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for showing me. So the name of your brand is a uh, co. Covenant? Let's see. Covenant, right? Covenant. Just Covenant. It's the Covenant of Jade here. Beautiful. Beautiful. What are, what are these beans here? They always wondered why they cut like that. It's convenient uh, to cut it like that, right? The rough... Right, the, um, or is it a meaning? In the lucky... Uh, oh, a lock. Yeah, it means yeah. lock. Can I see yeah, the, the, how, the, how it looks like? Because yeah. people wonder in the Western world why are there uh, jade beads? Uh, yeah, beans, beans, actually. Beans. Not beads, beans. beans. <coughs> Very interesting. Wow, beautiful. Take a look at this, guys. Pretty cool. So that means uh, lock. It's also set as pendants, right? Yes, yes, pendants. Right, 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 right. The beans here. It's transparent. It is transparent. It's beautiful. Pretty cool. Wow. What's the price like for a bean? <laughs> My piece is, is uh, one thousand, fifteen thousand Hong Kong. Hong Kong yeah. So one thousand seven hundred US dollars around that. Yeah. Sure. 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 1923 for all of them total price almost two thousand dollars guys but very nice this is jade untreated that's how it looks like type a jade beautiful jadeite always should say jadeite because people are mistaking always nephrite and jadeite right right beautiful beautiful so yeah jadeite is superior to nephrite it's actually also more conductive Jadeite is more conductive. It's harder, a little bit harder actually also. It's beautiful. Take a look at these bangles here. Here we also have the diamonds. So yeah. The Covenant, check them out. Do you have a card maybe? Here's your card. Covenant yes, yes, card. Yes. Beautiful. Check them out. Where are you based? In Hong Kong, right? Yes, Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Thank you so much for showing me. Thanks yeah, so much. Yeah. We, we do have, like, you have like, more? Like, uh, Guys, we have more beans here. Take a look at this. What's that price wise? Eight thousand eight hundred. One pair. One pair. This is a one four fifty. <coughs> 450 for both. Uh, 451. So the pair costs 451 US dollars. Beautiful. Yes, yeah. Nice clarity. And that's what we talked about. You know, if they would be green, they would be much more expensive. Even if they would be just part of it green, right? Yeah. Even if just part of it is green, also it increases green. already yes, the yes. value of it. Yeah. Beautiful jade. I, the yeah. sound, I like the sound of it. It has yeah. such a high pitch. I love yes. it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these 
beads. I mean, guys, kilos of natural bead strains. Look at this. Amazing. Wow. It's quite a variety here. Wow. What is this? Lepis? Yes, Lepis. Beautiful. At Kaiway Gems and Jewelry Factory Limited. Beautiful. Guys, now that I realize this, this is hydrothermal ruby. This is actually pretty rare. Usually ruby is uh, grown in the flame fusion process we see here, which only takes like 30 minutes to an hour to, to produce. And we are able to produce the sapphire or ruby material in blocks. I'm talking like from here to here, like a block, kilos of this, and it's uh, very easy to produce. But this here can, can only be grown and it takes actually a couple weeks to month to grow and it's difficult and it's not much on the market, at least in Europe, of these uh, synthetic rubies and hydrothermal. Very interesting, very interesting. Or it could be just a uh, red barrel, right? It could be that this is barrel and red, but yeah, that, that depends on the chemical uh, constellation, the chemical composition of this material here. But that's how it looks like, how it's growing. That's how you recognize it's hydrothermal by these chevron patterns. And if it's a facetted stone, you will also see these chevron patterns in the uh, facetted stone there. That's how they call it, because it looks like a chevron logo if you look at it from a certain angle. Very interesting. Here you see rounded the facetted gemstones here uh, that are made out of flame fusion material. I usually um, have rounded curves and them. When you see a sapphire with rounded curves, if it's smiling at you somewhat, you know, it, you know it's a joke, it's fake. So guys, be aware of this. And here we have the uh, lab-grown opal. And that's also very interesting. They do get better and better, but usually it's, the, the fire is in the same direction and it's limited. You cannot see the, the fire as three-dimensionally as with a real opal. That's why this material is very easily detected. It's very uh, fake looking. I mean, look at this. This is uh, pretty easy to tell that it's synthetic opal. Yeah, and here we have a mixture and uh, this could be possibly radioactive. Some of these materials are actually radioactive. So uh, I don't think it's health concerning, but it glows pretty cool. There's a YouTuber actually who facetted a real radioactive stone, but it was literally glowing in the dark, non-stop. And it was poisoning. It, it, it was great. I think the name was, I forgot the name. Um, he, he was cutting opals and all kinds of stones, very specifically. I will put the link in the video. Uh, I will put the link into the video. Yeah, that's how it looks. And there are the different colors of the opals. And yeah, that's what I can show you guys. Oh, and downstairs here, that's the uh, typical shape. These candle, oh, I call them the dildos, <laughs> the candle, candle like uh, flame fusion processed sapphires. This is sapphire material here. They come in every color. They can produce almost every color, I think. And yeah, the oldest process also. And the vinyl process is the oldest uh, synthetic process in the world. You can find antique pieces of jewelry with synthetic gemstones actually, made by the vinyl process. The hydrothermal is the newest, I think, and there was the flux process, the most, there is the flux process, the most sophisticated process. And that process is actually uh, invented by an Austrian, or I think German, German-Austrian man at a university in 1930 or 20, it was around that time. Uh, he also was awarded for that. Very nice guys, check this out. We are at RG Crystal Company at the Hong Kong Gem Convention, check them out. Guys, so as I expected, just to confirm this, this is red barrel, it's not synthetic hydrothermal ruby. There is hydrothermal ruby too, right? Yeah. But it's very rare. Um, like, we, do, we do have it, but you do have it. Uh, it's not like as for a little bit, little bit, little yeah, bit here, and there, so. here and there. But why? Is it hard to produce, or is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's it is. Very, it's difficult. It's difficult because it's a totally different mineral, guys. This is a barrel, and a corundum ruby is corundum. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, if you wonder how a hydrothermal emerald looks like, that's how it looks like. You can tell by the growth lines; it's very structured, pretty structured, and yeah, 
I mean, I don't know what this is. The inclusions tell it. The inclusions tell it. Nature does not repeat itself, guys. Re remember, nature is always uh, chaotic. You, you cannot. There is a structure to a certain extent, but you have to understand nature to understand the inclusions. It's a little complicated, but yeah. That's how um, hydrothermal emeralds look like. And they can create them actually pretty realistic looking. I mean, this is hydrothermal, right? Same as this, but this is more clear, right? And this here, to the, to the average jeweler, this would be a real emerald, for sure, 100%. This is, this is a real emerald, guys, to 99% of the jewelers out there, for sure. It's pretty cool. How much is this material like? 35. Dollars? For one carat. $35 a carat. I see. It's funny because usually you pay more in real stones for more clarity, but in synthetics you pay for the inclusions actually. That's pretty funny, right? <laughs> you make you try to make them look more realistic. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's pretty cool. I like this stone. This is like, yeah, I would have thought also this would be real. You have a whole bag full of it, huh? Look at that, guys. This would be a lot of money if this would be real. Colombian emeralds, right? <laughs> I mean, we can charge you as real, yeah, but <laughs> you see. No, no, no. We are not like that. Let's not give room for, for this. <laughs> uh, let's not give the people ideas to, to do certain stuff. I mean, because you would look at we this, you would legit. think it's real, right? Yeah. Hey, no, one would know. no one would know. Like, no, we are not doing. Don't worry. We have a certificate. Wait, let me control. let me take out my loop. Here, this is a certificate which we can. Oh, it's GIA. This is amazing. GIA certifies synthetics, but they don't they don't write which type of synthetic. This is one of the reasons why. Uh, kind of step, step away from the GA because this is pretty easy to tell apart a hydrothermal from a vinyl synthetic it's very simple to tell or a flux synthetic like a flux is much more sophisticated with the inclusions and you find uh, certain types of inclusions and flux but yeah that's they just write on it the slab brown there's the stone uh, I mean at least you know it's not real you know oh wow they're also special uh, <laughs> this is kind of like who needs that? But hey, you have it, so you, you yeah, can prove to the people yep. that this is real barrel synthetic emerald. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Laboratory grown barrel, grown emerald. Let me take a look at it under the loop. How does it look like to me? Wait, where's my loop? Show me your best. <laughs> I can show you everything that we got here. Are you doing the blogging for the... The what? YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, I do a YouTube channel. I'll give you my card. Oh, sure. We can, we can subscribe. You can? Yeah, you can. If you know what you're looking at, if you don't know and you know synthetics also, there, there is a... You can see the flux growth, the, the wavy appearance. This has not been in the earth for millions of years, like you can tell. By the structure, there's a certain structure to it. This one is more, uh, yeah, realistic looking. But if you know what to look out for, it's the overall growth structure. It's not even the inclusion so much. It's much more the uh, way the stone is grown, the wavy appearance, the oily appearance. But the high, believe it or not, the highest class of emerald looks quite similar to this. It also has this oily appearance in it, this interesting uh, wavy appearance. It's called uh, touch of oil. I don't know the Portuguese term for it, but yeah, the touch of oil. And you do have two-phase inclusions in these, right? In hydrothermal, you also have two-phase inclusions, I'm pretty sure. In flux, 100%, you have two-phase inclusions. So only the three-phase inclusion is a proof of it being a genuine earth-mined emerald. A two-phase inclusion is not proof of it. So if you see a two-phase inclusion, I'm pretty sure I could find one if I would have a microscope. But yeah, this is still, for the average man, very realistic. I mean, pretty cool. Yeah, I see a two-phase inclusion in there. Pretty nice. Very cool looking. I mean, take a look at this. That's how it looks like. Synthetic emerald. Yeah, I could look at these for hours, but <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing me. Thanks so much. Here's the godfather, the mother of synthetic emeralds. Here's the certificate. And as you can see, they don't tell you which type of synthetic it is. Interesting. It's too much effort, I guess.
Guys, so here we have some red or pinkish purplish uh, big spite. It's red barrel actually, it's the rarest niche gemstone in the world, one of the rarest and very very expensive and it uh, is found in the United States I think. Yeah, and it's uh, here to imitate uh, tourmaline, it would have the color of tourmaline, the average tourmaline and this would be ruby of course, imitating ruby. And that's how they would look like for set it. Pretty cool. It would be that pigeon blood red ruby and here's the uh, Pink tourmaline, that would be the pink tourmaline, and this would be the pigeon blood red uh, ruby. Very nice, very nice. But this is also very evenly colored, like usually when I order from AliExpress or some Chinese website, you do have in vinyl, exactly, in the vinyl process you have a mixture of colors. It's like pinkish on the outside and then there's always some pinkish in it with red, but this is like evenly red. That's one of the interesting things with these hydrothermal as, uh, specimens I realize is that they are much more evenly colored and you do get a evenly colored stone. With uh, vinyl it's like pinkish more, pinkish red. Very interesting. So you also imitate here Zambian color, it's darker, it's interesting, so funny. And here you have the uh, uh, Colombian emeralds. Colombian emeralds, Zambian emeralds, so you can specifically define the color by uh, increasing certain sh chemicals into the composition and create certain colors. It's uh, so cool, so cool how far we have come with this. And uh, don't get it twisted, this, been, this process has been around for over 100 years. No, no, the hydrothermal is newer, but the vernier process is uh, the oldest. So we do been creating synthetics for over hundreds of years. But on, on that level not, with the coloring and uh, being that specific. Very cool. Thank you. So here we have hydrothermal power epochollet gemstones and they easily do people like this really looks like a power epo to most people but when you look at it further it's a hydrothermal synthetic that is just colored like a power epo and this is of course the most ideal power epo color so yeah guys be aware if you get some offered something like this for very low price it's most likely synthetic because these stones are the rarest, most expensive niche gemstones in the world. So they can also create synthetic rutile. But what we talked about, the rutile silk and the gemstones, that's titanium oxide actually, right? Titanium oxide? And yeah, that's uh, the mineral of it. It also occurs in real but not in a gemstone form like that, right? Like, uh, Rutel doesn't come in this uh, clarity or, no, it's just opaque or something like this, right? And that's the rough of it, that's the rough Rutel, that's how it looks like. Does it grow in this size or is it cut already? It's cut. It's cut already, so it's uh, bigger. It's, uh, what process is it grown in? Is um, it... I think this is uh, also the Masbuchokowski. Oh, you also have the pulled process, there are separate, two types of processes with the... Uh, with the flame fusion process. Chokrowski. Which? Chokrowski. Chokrowski. The pulled process? Yeah. Pulled. yeah that, that's what I just talked about, that what, what have, we have been missing. There is a separate, uh, newer version of the vernier process, which is called pulled process, when uh, there's, they basically pull it during the, the creation of it. I don't know how to explain it, I would have to show it to you. That's a pulled, pulled one. Or, yeah, it's a, it's a pulled vernier synthetic. Very cool. But it takes just as long as the normal process, the normal vinyl, right? You just pull it. That's, that's the difference. We are around one, mm, one month, maybe a little bit more. One month? For the vinyl, one month. No, no, no. I mean, like for the pulled. The pull takes one month. Um, yeah, for example, pull sapphire, is, uh, it also depends on the um, crystal. Uh, okay, okay. The, uh, Interesting. Because I thought the vinyl, normal vinyl takes only a couple hours, the normal, right? The normal vinyl? One day, one bolt. One day? One day, one bolt. One what? One day, one bolt. Oh, bolt like oh okay, this. one day, one bolt. Okay, okay, okay. But a big one or a small one? Like, it depends. Like this. like this. Looks like a popsicle, it's like candy. <laughs> very interesting looking. Yeah. Oh, this one is not very This one is not very nice. This, this one is, is not, yeah, this is not very nice. This is a pulled and it pulled, takes yeah. longer. I see, I see, I see. I call them all vinyl, but it's vinyl pulled. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, is it uh, Russian? Was it Russian or? Chukrovsky, no, he was Czech. Czech, Czech. Oh, it was Czech. Okay, it's a Czech man developing the vinyl, but it's based on the vinyl process, right? It's similar, like. Oh, 
Uh, originally, Vernal was the first, but Shukrovsky is different. It's made in vacuum. In the vacuum, actually. Vacuum, oh, okay. And it's uh, pulling Thanks. out of the mouth, so it's different, different. I see, I see. In a vacuum, so it's more sophisticated, takes, takes much longer the pull process. It's also harder to identify, I guess, because you don't have so many curved lines in it probably, right? In veneer, normal veneer you have like very curved lines and this maybe not, I'm not sure. Veneer has growing lines. Yeah, grow, grown lines. Okay, okay. Very interesting. Beautiful. So here we have Ruta, the rainbow refraction. That it has a much higher refraction than a diamond for sure. Like you can tell, the dispersion of fire is much higher, much higher. Pretty cool. Thank you for showing me. All right, guys. So here we have the very, very rare, the most rare quartz stone in the world, the lavender quartz. I can't even believe this is natural quartz. Look at this; is so beautiful. The appearance of it, just the way the structure, the silk of it, how it's distributed, and the the appearance is most beautiful quartz in the world. And what can I tell you about it? Um, but with this stone we learn, it becomes very apparent that the cut is the most important aspect of a gemstone. Pretty much. I mean, it is. If the clarity is at a certain level, the colors is at a certain level, you need the cut. That's the, the most important factor in the end. Because when you have a window, you can't see the color. And these, this is beautiful material, but the issue is, the cut. It's cut like a average quartz. It's not cut like, an, like a rare gem. It's cut like a quartz and that's why you see it's cut for carat weight because it's sold by carat weight. So I would have to recut, take, my, take the most intense colors and then recut them. Like this is here the most intense color as you can see. But the cut is, it's, I don't like the cut. I don't like this here, you know. So we would have to recut that. And that's just a reminder for you. Keep in mind the cut gives you the end, final result. So as Peretti said to me yesterday, no comparison, because once we reach a certain level of emerald quality, you cannot compare it. <clears throat> one of them might be lighter and one of them might be darker, but it's just a taste in the end. It's just a question of taste. You cannot compare them. They are, once you reach the, reach the superb class, there's no comparison. Yeah, guys, it's hilarious. So yesterday we were sitting there looking at emeralds and I uh, mentioned Jerry and they've been like, what, Jerry emeralds? His prices are way too high, don't go to him. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. But apparently, yeah, this is, uh, when we compare now the prices and are serious about business. Yeah, man, dude, this is very good. $2,000 a carrot for this one. It's $12,000. $12, it's quite vivid. What is like the um, oiling? Yes, minor. Minor? Yes, this is sick. It's pretty cool. So you can find deals. You can find your deals. It's not like he doesn't have every size and every variety like some might have, but you find prices that you cannot find anywhere for quality like this. It's crazy. Beautiful. Look at this. Guys, what in the world? <laughs> Look at the size of these Capuchon stones. This is Zambian emerald, I think. Pretty sure. This would be Colombian. Wow, this is millions. Crazy stuff. No oil. Beautiful. Take a look at this Zambia. It stands there. At Fei. I guess it's a Chinese company. I'm not sure. Very nice. This is a brown diamond, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's a brown diamond. Some sugar loaf. Amazing, I mean, guys. Wow. Guys, look at these beads. Burma, Burma rubies. Amazing. Orange sapphires. Look at the size of this. Yellow sapphire. That's the sapphire. I mean, this is really the exclusive area of the convention for colored gemstones. It's in between the diamond area, the diamond convention. So this is the diamond hall and in between you have these intersecting booths of uh, yeah, higher class uh, colored gemstones. Not all of them, but yeah, you do see here different stuff. It's definitely higher priced. And also a booth like this, I have been told, is 50,000 US dollars for the convention of five days. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Here we are, guys. It's a dream coming true. The gem expert at the gem expo. And yesterday, one of, in one of these booths here was Dr. Peretti sitting, actually, and uh, doing a video himself. Pretty cool. Guys, I am obsessed with this artwork. This is so beautiful. Look at this red ruby here. I'm pretty sure it's ruby. Look at the color. No red, no gemstone has a red like this. Beautiful. 
Just amazing. I would love to have an office with posters like this. Beautiful. When you magnify a gemstone, you just see. But of course, it's, this is a natural stone, but it's the highest quality. I don't think this is actually a CGI. This is actually a real photo of a gemstone here. Because you can see the cut. It's a natural cut. It's really un, a little uneven, you know. A natural gemstone is always cut, not super symmetric. It's not machine cut, it's hand cut. Beautiful, beautiful. Here we have more. Vea Razak Gemco LTD. Pretty cool. I mean, just take a look at this. This artwork right here. The Lapidaris Perfection. Look at this. Amazing. Diamond color. The artwork. Pretty cool. So here we are. The tip of the iceberg, the colored diamond section, simply amazing. Look at this. Look how small these stones are. But don't underestimate the size. They are very, very expensive because they are untreated natural colored diamonds. And yeah, what can I tell you about it? They look magnificent, magnificent jewels. The most expensive gemstone in the world, a colored diamond. Right under it, we have the ruby, which is uh, the record holder for the colored normal colored gemstone, but the diamond is still more expensive per carat. Very nice, very nice, beautiful. And we are at Antwerp Cut, Hong Kong Limited. But you are based in Belgium, basically, right? Based in Belgium. Very nice. Do you want to talk about prices or not? Or already, like, <laughs> how much would, like, this stone be, for instance? Like, this blue, it's blue, right? It's a blue diamond, 0 0.36. Green, green, green blue. Yeah. Is, is it six figures? Is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's six hundred eighty for carats. So something like two. two six hundred eighty thousand dollars a carat. Per so carat. per carat. Yeah. <laughs> that's a thirty. You know that's so what I'm talking about. Like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. So it's under a carat. So it's less. So it's six figures. But if this would be a couple of carats, then we talk about exponentially huge sums of money, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. Amazing. Beautiful. This is perfect to showcase how important the cut is because you can see here those are huge diamonds and they are super flat cut and they only reflect the light on the edges as you can see. Take a look at this. They are super big natural diamonds but they only reflect on the, si on the sides because that's how it works, you know. The facets reflect the light and if it's cut the wrong way you will not get a flash. So definitely, definitely Look out for good cut diamonds if you are investing into diamonds because the, the cut gives it its sparkle. Look at that one. That's a brulette cut, I think. Beautiful, beautiful. Amazing. It's a fancy orange brown VS2 GIA certified diamond and the cut of it is just magnificent. Belgium cutters known for their diamonds. So we've been looking for a booth, we found the booth, finally, took some time, and they just ignored us, that, that was hilarious, like, bro, we're about to spend some serious amount of money on, a, on an emerald, and they just ignore you, like, we showed, we, he actually had a video of it, we showed it to the guy, and he just, I was like, I didn't even pay attention, what's going on, yeah, they, they just ignore us, why, like, what's going on, like, it's weird, it's weird, but you gotta go with the flow, you know, here are so many sellers, we go now to the other convention, and we will take a look at some jade jewelry. That's the main focus right now. Jade jewelry and magnificent jewelry. Magnificent jewelry. Let's see. Let's go, guys. Take a look at this. So that's the expo right here at the airport. And now we will drive with the shuttle service to the jewelry expo on the Hong Kong Island. Pretty cool. Take a look at the mountains. Funny thing is, the last seats on the bus are always free. But those are usually the best seats, aren't they? So yeah. Look at the construction sites here. Look at the construction. Crazy. Yeah, the mountains. Let's focus on the outside. <laughs> so 
here. I'm wondering how central uh, Hong Kong looks like. I've never been there actually. Always been here the past two days. So yesterday and today. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> 